Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to welcome you all to this enlightening session, exploring the pivotal role of the ISOC alumni network in the real internet governance. Our hybrid session is designed to kind of collaboration, recognize our alumni's achievements throughout the year, and shed light on the unparalleled contributions to the internet governance. From our inspiring Utah GF ambassadors to our dedicated ISOC program fellows, mid-career fellows, early career fellows, and so on, our alumni network underscores the essence of the collective strength and purpose uh, of the Internet Society. As we delve deep into today's discussion, we will spotlight the stellar 2023 alumni network accentuating the significance in the broader context of the Internet governance. Throughout the session, we will unpack the array of activities hosted by the, the alumni network. There are more than 20 activities throughout the year, <laughs> from workshops focusing on vital topics like encryption and internet fragmentation, to our esteemed huddles at the ICF, which play a crucial role in bridging connections during large-scale meetings. These platforms epitomize the alumni network's commitment to nurturing continued connection, championing local topics, and steadfastly upholding ISOC principles. But that's not all. Today's highlights will include a deep dive into the highlight of the 2023 monthly workshops, where we we'll reflect on the outcomes and glean insights from each of the workshops with topics ranging from AI governance to interplanetary networks, community networks, and so on. Then an intimate chat on the ISOC alumni coffee chats with our esteemed colleague Lily here, emphasizing the value of the casual meets in weaving a tighter knit community. And then a comprehensive discussion on our huddles, underscoring the integral role at various global events like ICF, ICANN, RightsCon, and so on, the regional ICFs. And our session's ultimate goal resonates with the ISOC's mission, advocating for an open, interconnected network. We are here to foster stronger bonds, embrace the spirit of volunteerism intrinsic in our ISO community, and especially in our, in ISO alumni, in our ISO alumni network, and our collective work towards an inclusive digital ecosystem. Uh, so now, uh, thank you every so much uh, for joining us. Let's embark on the journey together. Uh, so first, I will give the floor uh, to Lily to talk about uh, the coffee chats. Thank you, Nico, for uh, the overview, the general overview for everything that the alumni network has been up to this year. And it's exciting to see how we are able to rally the support amongst ourselves to be able to do the work we do. And you mentioned rightly the spirit of volunteering. It turns out that the learning doesn't end and to bring our enthusiastic self to the forefront to be able to do this and continue the conversation is really inspiring. And just to say that a, a huge shout out to the team at ISOC for their, their continuous support and to Mauricia who literally has us um, coming together to just keep on the work we've, we've, been, we've been up to since our fellowship days to those who also joined um, um, ISOC True Learning um, on the ISOC Learning Platform. All of those people are also invited to be a part, and this is why we see the continuous growth amongst ourselves and for the community we interface with. Then today I'm going to talk about the coffee chats and what it has or means to us as an alumni network. Think of the coffee chat as a place where we are able to unwind and unpack at the same time. So think of an informal setting where we are able to discuss issues that's uh, in line with the Internet Society's action plan, which focuses on growing the internet, strengthening the internet, and empowering people to take action. So uh, for the past nine, 10 months, nine months, and the 10th one is coming um, on the 18th of October, We've been up to the coffee chat every month. What we've been doing is using a, an approach where the first 30 minutes is given to an expert speaker to speak on the topic, and then we have the room open for people to discuss. Now, we've gone through issues that are cross-cutting and issues that are also related to what Internet Society stands for, allowing young people to bring our voices to the forefront and to just see how we can gather support on the grassroots level to make things that are actionable towards the overarching um, goals for Internet Society. So from everywhere across the world, we've had people join in who are alumni. Uh, the idea was to have us talking among ourselves, and it's been growing. I see some people are taking interest and in learning on the ISOC platform just so that they can also join some of these conversations. And it's been growing from time to time. So we've spoken about encryption. We've spoken about how to take action. We've spoken about how to even really support what it is you're doing, um, things around policy, and all of the things are what enriches those sessions. So for our continuation, in the past month, we spoke about about gender bias and AI. There's going to 
be a continuation also this month. And this is uh, a clarion call for everyone to look out for the announcement when it goes out and plan to be a part of it. Now, like I said, we have it in a relaxed way. So if you had any question that, that has been on your mind, something that has been uh, probably burning on your heart and you want to reach aspects in the space, which is internet society as an organization, and just people who also work in the space, you can seize the opportunity to use that one to ask any question, one that wouldn't uh, wouldn't get people to judge you. You can be yourself, and you can learn well at it. At the end of it, we end with action, something that's actionable, and we ask that you go and work with it, make the implementation follow um, after the conversation. So. In essence, that is what our, com our coffee chat stands for. And for alumni who haven't been a part, please seize the opportunity. We need many of you to be hosts, many of you to be speakers, and just many of you to also join the conversation to enrich it. And with that, I'm going to give back the floor to you, uh, Nico, and another colleague continues. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you so much. It's very important, the work of the coffee chats, because it's a, a place where all the alumni can join together and share their insights in a more decontracturated and informal manner. So now we are switching to Marco. Marco is the leader, one of the leaders of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance that have, have been pivotal in, in shaping the, the discussions in the ISOC Alumni Network because uh, the Youth Coalition is a place where you can also find the uh, other colleagues and the volunteer is a spirit to, to help us developing a workshops, getting senior speakers. So, Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nico. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm here as a part of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance from, uh, as a steering committee for Eastern Europe. Together also with Nico, we are <laughs> part of the steering committee for this year. So the whole idea of inter youth, internet, uh, youth Coalition on Internet Governance is to uh, collaborate and to network also the young people that are under 35 years old and to help them navigate to the internet governance world. What means to help them is we have uh, several activities that we are doing to the whole the year. One of them is um, preparing uh, proposals uh, for sessions for IGF, like this one here. Uh, this year we had, uh, I think, together with the Youth Standing Group on uh, Internet Society, over 150 uh, submissions, which 10% of them were selected. Around 50 sessions here are the sessions that we helped and collaborate together with all the youth people to better structure them, uh, to help them during the, the drafting, the phase of submission proposal, because there is a procedure that needs to be taken. And from someone who is new in this world, it might be uh, hard to, to navigate to this. That's why our uh, one of our activities is to make working groups on the topics and prepare them and together to uh, uh, submit the proposals from the youth. Uh, another thing that we are doing is uh, we have also bi-weekly uh, newsletter where we share opportunities and uh, uh, opportunities for youth people like jobs, fellowships, events that are happening, a lot of stuff. Uh, together with the Inter Society, we are doing a mentorship program where uh, we uh, open a call for mentors to mentor the new cohort of youth ambassadors from Internet Society. Some of us are already mentors or have been part of this process. And it's very crucial and important, this kind of, of um, activity, because uh, navigating the, the youth uh, or the new generation of Internet ambassadors, it's uh, very crucial to have a mentor, someone who can guide them or give their experience to more easily flow into the world of Internet governance. Other topics that are uh, similar, like we mentioned in the beginning, are uh, our sharing of the resources. We have also some uh, mailing list, which is very active. Uh, we are sharing all the resources and happenings between the youths in the internet governance space, uh, the writing blog posts, and uh, from time to time organizing some events similar, like uh, the activities where we do webinars on a specific topic where we can uh, share the experience from other youth, what they are doing, how they are doing, so to be known and maybe collaborate to them with them in the future. But as uh, important thing is the networking part. So I would say it's uh, one of the crucial things that is a co coalition we are doing. And we are actively each year as we are here present in the IGF in Japan. So uh, I would thanks again to Nico for, for the time here to explain the Youth Coalition Internet Governance and get back to, hi to his mic. Thank you, Marco. Thank you so much. Uh, we are very good in terms of time. So now we are passing the floor to 
Saba, Hears, and Ananda. Both are coordinators of youth IGF. Saba is coordinator of the IGF Youth Ethiopia, and Ananda is coordinator of IGF Youth in Nepal. So first Saba and then Ananda, they will talk a little about their initiatives. Thank you very much, Nico, uh, for giving me the chance indeed to speak on my project. Uh, so as Nico said, my name is Saba. I'm the coordinator of the USIG of Ethiopia. Um, I'm also one of the ISOC alumni, and I served as uh, served as the last year's last year ambassador program of the 2022. Um, so I will be sharing just a little bit about the project that we were been doing since last year. Um, so as, as ISO Youth Ambassadors of 2022, my teammates, Bu, uh, Katerina, and me, we're working on a project called Toolkit for Youth Participation and in Internet Governance. Um, so this project includes the concept, the concept note and uh, the concept note paper for the model IGF. Uh, so currently, we have collected some of the materials for all parts of the toolkit mainly, and the model IGF is currently in the process um, of the completion. Um, with the toolkits, we we expect to complete the first edition uh, in, the, in the coming two months. Um, so as a model IGF concept note paper. Um, just to talk a little bit about the project, um, the project topic is the map mapping existing pathways and crafting the model IGF. So we used three pr principles first of all. And the first one is tru truth. Um, it really provides a reliable information shown on the official website of, um, of the program. So we provide the website address and also reference at the bottom of each page for further double check and reference. And second, secondly, it is a systematic uh, and user friend friendly because it provides an easy way for, for, for young people to participate in a global governance of internet. So we collected the materials at two levels. First, at the global levels, and second, at a regional level or an, at a national level. We also noticed that there are other ways um, rather than IGF to provide deeper engagement in internet governance. So we included uh, first uh, advanced stage and second academic passes. Um, yeah, so once it is published, um, you will take a, take a look at it and we'll know how and what to choose that first on your own um, interest and also on your own situation. Um, so just to talk a little bit about my apprenticeship program, it has really opened, I can say that it has really opened a new doors for me and for my teammates, I hope. Um, it has provided me with opportunities to network with like-minded young leaders, professionals, experts um, from around the world, and I can say that it was a phenomenal experience um, for, for all of us, for all of our the youth, the youth ambassadors. Um, so after after this ambassadorship program, I joined the um, alumni network and had the privilege to be part of some of the sessions, to speak my ideas, um, and also um, to moderate some of the session on, especially on encryption. Um, so personally and also professionally, I can say that this program has really empowered me um, due to the amazing people in my network and also the amazing people that have that that, that that has been invited to the sessions to give us or to share their expertise with us. Uh, so to this year, uh, Muse Ambassadors, I would like to say that just take this opportunity as a stepping uh, as a stepping stone to a bra bright future um, in your career or in your life. This program really can lead you to advocate for an open internet uh, or become an expert on on internet related uh, fields or issues and just dedicate yourself 
truly to this program and um, just make the most out of it. Thank you very much, Nico. I will hand over to you. Yes, heading over to Ananda as well. Ananda, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nico, for this opportunity and uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Ananda. I'm from Nepal. I uh, currently coordinate Youth IGF Nepal. And if you guys wonder what is Youth IGF Nepal, we organize the younger version of uh, Internet Governance Forum like this, where we actually invite multiple stakeholders into one session and give them opportunity to collaborate and work on the discuss on the issues that are pressing on the internet currently so as part of youth igf nepal we not only organize one igf in a year we also do different capacity building programs for youth uh, last year we were able to send our three fellows to india school on internet governance by providing them travel support and we also encourage our uh, young community members to actually apply for different fellowship programs and capacity build building programs out of Nepal as well. So uh, by doing that, uh, our fellows who have been representing uh, outside Nepal come back to our ecosystem and then engage with more energy and like uh, give back to the community. That's why the youth IGF Nepal community is growing a lot. Uh, we have uh, more than 20 MSC members right now. Uh, we work uh, diligently to make uh, Youth IGF Nepal successful. Uh, also, Youth IGF members have been contributing in different ecosystem, um, into society itself, uh, joining different um, standing group and uh, different special interest, interest group, uh, working on different issues back in Nepal and contributing to the whole IG ecosystem. Also, uh, we, as a Youth IGF Nepal, hel are helping to organize Asia Pacific uh, Youth IGF. And again, um, some of our fellows are uh, contributing to the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, and some of them has, has been attending online these uh, IGF sessions. And um, this is how we do our capacity building. And similarly, we also um, are part of the bigger coalition. It's called Digital Freedom Coalition. Youth IGF Nepal is a founding coalition member of Digital Freedom Coalition. And Digital Freedom Coalition organizes Digital Freedom Summit annually where we talk about the broader digital human rights issues and digital A's and we organize a summit annually. This year we'll, we'll be organizing on the 9th of December where we will not only invite uh, youth stakeholders, also other stakeholders to actually talk about the pressing issues in the digital space. And then like uh, we um, collaborate with colleges to do the capacity building events. That is how we are doing it. If there are anything else, we can come back later. Thank you, Nico, for the opportunity. Back to you. Thank you so much, Sava and Ananda. This is great because the Youth IGF demonstrate that there is place to go local and, and apply all the, the knowledge we have learned into our local space, right? The organizing things, also having the conversation or, or bringing the conversation to our uh, own spaces and reflecting, as Ananda said, in the regional as well. So it's a very good way to, for collaboration, fostering collaboration and, and, and also working with, with peers. So now we, we have here Valerie as well from the alumni network, and she is going to talk a little about our alumni huddles we have had throughout different meetings, RightsCon, ICANN, regional IGF. So it's very good to, to have Valerie here with us. Uh, please, Valerie, uh, mention, you have like five minutes to mention about the, this, the huddles. Thank you so much, Nico. And just like you rightly said, we've had a number of alumni huddles that we've held across different meetings. Um, that's with the ICANN meetings, with the RightsCon meetings, as well as with the regional IGFs. What we noted is that we have a lot of young people who are spread across different fellowships who have previously been um, members of alumni of the Internet Society Network. And what we aim to achieve is to be able to have a full network of all our members and be able to collaborate and build capacity for the alumni within the network. So what we do with these hurdles is, for instance, when we get um, information of some of our alumni who are going to be part of the meetings, like I said, across ICANN, RightsCon, the regional IGFs as well, we come together and brainstorm as to how those um, alumni on site can then create a hurdle 
and also help us who are online to join the huddles and ensure there's networking, there's capacity building, there's learning from each other. Because also what we noted is that some of the Internet Society alumni network members had not gone to ICANN meetings. And they were curious about what happens at ICANN meetings, curious about what's the entry point. And I think the alumni huddles really helped because I remember when we were in ICANN 76, Nico, um, there was a question we got from some of the alumni who are joining us online asking, how do I correlate these two um, internet ecosystems and ensure I get a place where I can also enter the ecosystem? And how can um, someone who's come in through the Internet Society Youth Ambassador Program or the Fellowship Program then find a way into many of the ICANN communities in terms of a, a, an ease into the process to be able to better also just give that ease of entry because some of the communities can be very complex, but also just having that collaborative nature of the alumni, having the support you require, having a space where you can constantly ask questions as to how do I enter, how do I effectively contribute, how do I take these learnings from um, these various meetings and replicate the same at home. So I think, um, just like you're saying, Nico, the alumni huddles are here with us, and it's something that we continue to promote. We are also having one coming up in Hamburg during ICANN 78. So I think it's very important for us to ensure that we have our alumni. And just like Lily had said earlier, our call would be for all the alumni to come and join us so that we can make this um, network very broad, very effective, very value driven, and also very supportive to ensure that we keep the people within the network, but we also open it up to people who are not within the network to join us and keep bringing in more voices of young people across the Internet Society Alumni Network and other meetings as well. Thank you, Nico. Thank you so much, Valerie. Yes, the Huddles has been very, very proactive. And also, personally, I, I was found myself uh, meeting another uh, youth, uh, former youth ambassadors uh, that I didn't know that they were at the meeting uh, at that moment. So it's a good place to to foster this networking with with people that sometimes you cross with them in, in the middle of the meeting and do you really don't know. So these huddles are a place where oh you you can say oh you you are a former fellow which here uh, and that is a, starting a conversation having about some topics and also as Valerie mentioned like for the online. Uh, alumni that are not participating on site in this kind of meetings, they are learning, and, and we also, the ones that, that, that are on site, are helping them to understand what is happening at that meeting. We, we, I remember in the in the ICANN uh, 76 huddle, we also touched on what is happening. Yes, the, these issues are happening with the DNS at the moment. We are going to discuss about this. So the online uh, alumni alumnus there. Uh, also had ideas uh, for us to, okay, well, try to, to talk about this and mention about this other. So it's a, it's a good thing to, to collaboration and definitely a, a way to, to, to know other former fellows that or, or ISOC members. ISOC, and uh, it's very funny because everybody is joining the, the huddle there, the, see a lot of people together and say, oh, what is happening here? I am also from Internet Society. So it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, informal uh, way of, of, of doing more networking. So now I have a very short presentation to share with you. If the technical could show at the screen. Excellent. So with this presentation, I would like to, to show uh, all the activities we have had throughout the year, uh, talking a, a little about the outcomes of each of the workshops. Uh, so we can add a little of content or, or what we have learned uh, throughout the year. So uh, starting from January, <laughs> we have a, a workshop with Tracy uh, and, and some alu al alumni uh, talking about opportunities in the internet governance. Tracy touched on, on what is the IGF, uh, what are the, the different fellowships and opportunities available to participate at the different uh, ecosystem uh, meetings of, of, of the full internet governance forum. Then he had some storytelling uh, for us about their exp his experience with the IGF, with the Internet Society, with the multi-stakeholder model, right? What is the way of doing things in, in a multi-stakeholder basis? Uh, then about the youth engagement, what some concepts that for, for new people that, that are also, because the, the, our uh, ISOC alumni workshops were open to every Internet Society member to know and, and to be more attentive and to learn how to apply also to, to these opportunities. And also we touched on, on the different topics or the different uh, baskets uh, for the, the uh, 
doing the reference with the with the Kurvalija book on internet governance that the internet governance has, you know, the different topics. Uh, that was a, a very good workshop. I think everybody learned a lot. Then in February, we have the, our second workshop that was about internet fragmentation. We uh, had a very important uh, senior speaker there that is Farsane Badier from the United States. He is a internet governance specialist and is the expert on the internet fragmentation. In that uh, workshop, we discovered that fragmentation has different level or, or categories such as the technical fragmentation, geopolitical fragmentation, the economic fragmentation. So it's very important to learn uh, and, and it was a very good moment for all the, the Internet Society members to discuss and, and, and put the, their insights on what are the different categories of, of the fragmentation. It's, it's not all about technical fragmentation. There are infrastructure fragmentation or cybersecurity fragmentation. When we are talking about content, uh, moderation content, that, that could be another level of the uh, fragmentation, but so, some others say that no, that is not fragmentation. So it was a good moment to, to, to generate this discussion and also about data localization loss, right? This workshop was very well, and we also had a, an alumni guest invited that was Innocent Adrico Uga uh, from Uganda that talked about the internet shutdowns in, in his country, an important issue regarding internet fragmentation. So going to March, we have had the first huddle at the ICANN 76. There are some photos of, of the huddle there. You can see like uh, the us there and the people that, that join us with the hats uh, in Mexico. They, they used to, to use these hats. And also you, you can see the, the people that was online at the moment learning as we were mentioning in, in, in the part of the huddles. It seems that we were very happy there. <laughs> And then in March, we have uh, our third workshop about the interplanetary networks. We, we, we was very glad to have been Cerf, Binton Cerf, the father of the internet, uh, with us, talking about uh, different aspects of the interplanetary network, such as the uh, DTN uh, protocol, Delay Tolerant Network Protocol, the, with all the high delays and disruptions of, of this protocol that is communicating between planets, right? We are talking about the internet out of the Earth. And then, uh, also about the store and forward, the, the issue of how the satellites uh, need to transfer these packets. It's not uh, like the DNS we have on Earth, because these packets need to wait until the orbit uh, uh, put the planet the most closer uh, as possible to, to, to send the packet uh, uh, perfectly. So these technicalities, uh, and also being touched on the IPNC, that is the Interplanetary Network Group in the, in the IETF, and also the, the possible integration in the future with the IP protocol that could merge Earth's internet with the space network. So in maybe in the future with this protocol, we could uh, have access to Jupiter uh, things in real time. What, what knows? Uh, who knows uh, what, what will be the future of this? And also being served, touch on, on some of the NASA's role a pioneer in the Internet Planetary Network. The, there was a, a very good story he told about uh, when when they they did a, a new protocol uh, that it, that was better than, than than the previous one. They needed to update the 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 rover that was on Mars like remotely. They updated the protocol that the rover was using for communicating. So wow, this kind of uh, interesting things we we have touched on in, in these workshops. And I think that a lot of people uh, learn a lot uh, about this thing that maybe is, is, is about the internet, but uh, outside Earth, right? Uh, so I, I don't want to extend in, in some of, uh, of the things, but we have plenty of time. Uh, but we then have uh, some little time at the end for the questions. Then in April, we, we have a webinar together with the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance and the Internet Society Youth Standing Group. That was where, where we started to collaborate with with our peers. Uh, in this webinar, we, we saw a little about what is the IGF, again, what, is the, what are the different intersectional activities of the IGF, you, you know, the best practice forum, the dynamic coalitions, and the policy networks. And we explored uh, some learnings from previous years, also touch, uh, touch uh, about youth engagement uh, and so on. Then in April as well, we have the, the meet and greet with the youth ambassador because the, this year the youth ambassador was selected like in the early months of the year because 
is the first time the youth ambassadors are not only attending the Internet Governance Forum, the global one, but also the regional uh, fora and different like uh, fora like, like the rights con. So in April, all the meetings were like starting in the year, and we have had this meet and greet with them, uh, where where some of the alumni were present, and was a very good moment to to st start establishing uh, this networking with, with with the new cohort. Then also in April, we have our fourth workshop about AI governance and policies with our guest invited Warabil Mudongo from Botswana. Uh, with al also with very good alumni. Our guest alumni were Rodrigo and, and Ose, touched uh, about different uh, policy aspects of, of the artificial intelligence. We, in this workshop, the, it was covered about the ethical frameworks, uh, the transpar transparency and explainability of the uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and the deep learning uh, networks. Then about accountability and responsibility, the, the bias issue, verdad? Uh, through the, the gender bias and, and the fairness of, of, the, of these algorithms. So privacy concerns, safety and security, a lot of different uh, subtopics on the artificial intelligence governance that was very great for, for the alumni to, to, to learn and also the Internet Society members to engage in this conversation. Uh, despite that the artificial intelligence is not like a central topic of the Internet Society, uh, we, we thought that the, because they, it touches on privacy and also on different aspects like standardization, we thought that it was a topic that was relevant. And because we were the ISOC alumni network, we decided <laughs> which workshops we would like to, to have. So this topic was for sure very interesting for the Internet Society community. Then in May 2023, we have our uh, four or five workshop, fifth workshop about community networks with a very now figure such as Shane Coffin, an ex ISOC. Uh, Shane Coffin is an expert in telecommunications, and she touched a, a lot on on not only community network but also Wi-Fi internet service providers and a wireless internet service provider. Sorry. Also, we touch on satellite networks and so on. So what the market and the digital divide is about, right? The, the community networks are there to be constructed, to be community-based, uh, initiated, and wow, the, the is, is the way we, we can uh, reach like the next billion connected to the internet, right? So in this case, we, we have Shadrash Ankara experience about community networks in Ghana, and also other alumni uh, featuring uh, their, their experiences with the community networks. In June, we reach and had our huddle at the Rights Con in Costa Rica, where different colleagues uh, joined together from the online, whether they were online or on site, again, to know the former youth ambassadors or, or program fellows uh, in the past. And uh, wow, uh, these huddles, uh, that, that, that moment was when, when we, we find out or, or, or figure out that the huddles are very, very good uh, for, the, for constructing the, the alumni network. Then in June, again, we have <laughs> the second ICANN huddle in, in ICANN 77. There are some photos there. People is always very happy at the huddles. <laughs> uh, this was in Washington, right, in the ICANN 77. And Tracy was there, Lily was there, a lot of people. And uh, you, yes, it is true. If you see the faces, they were all very, very happy. <laughs> and was not only for the photo, <laughs> was because happy of the moment. Then uh, in June, again, a lot of meetings in June, we have had the Eurodig uh, huddle as well, um, where I, I was not there, but <laughs> uh, people enjoyed a lot. Uh, they say that they, they had very good experiences. And also, Eurodig was a crucial regional IGF this year, discussing a lot about artificial intelligence and different things. So it was very, very interesting for the ISO alumnus that were there. Then in, in June as well, we have the workshop on encryption, the first one, because we wanted to have a series of workshops regarding encryption that is a, a major topic uh, covering different areas. So in that uh, workshop, we have Callum Bog from the UK, with governmental affairs and advocacy at the Internet Society. Also, we have Lily there moderating and Marco as well. Uh, it was very interesting to talk about the the technicalities and the, the more the concept of encryption, right? I remember this workshop touched on on digital signatures as well uh, as the the all the encryption different protocols that you can use. So it's very good for the ones that sometimes are not so technical and want to learn what what this uh, encryption is about. 
I always say to, to my students, because I am a professor at the university, that you know the prime numbers that you learn in, in the school, the a multiplication of two big prime numbers is the key of these <laughs> algorithms. So the computer needs to deal with, it, with this problem that is the, the factorization. But well, also the quantum computing is here, so <laughs> this is at risk as well. So then we had uh, our second workshop about encryption. Uh, I think the, the photo is wrong there. Uh, let me do, yes, I don't know what happened. Uh, yes, we, we have several workshops. Oh, maybe it's a duplicated, okay. Uh, in July 2023, we have some coffee chats about Global Encryption Day uh, on the 5th of July with Theodos and Paula. Uh, that is a senior policy and advocacy advisor. Again, touching on, on, on issues of encryption, but more on a, on a general level. I think it's wo it was more about uh, data privacy laws and the use of encryption in, in more in the policy uh, level. Exactly. With Esther, uh, Marco, I remember, was moderating. We had also Sharon uh, from Canada. So what was more a, a conversation about the policies in, in regarding encryption. Then we have a coffee chat uh, on your impact stories uh, when Leah Kessling, the senior director of individual membership from the Internet Society, was talking uh, about the action plan of the Internet Society and what are the things that the, the, they were looking uh, for uh, from, the, from the action plan, uh, several things. Uh, then in, uh, in August, we have an alumni, alumni regional update Exploring Internet Developments in, in the North American region with Kevin Dorbelus, our alumni from, from the Africa region that now is living in the USA. That was uh, together with the senior speaker Natalie Kappel from North America Government and Regulatory Affairs. Then again in August, we have our third uh, workshop about encryption. I told you it was a, a series of, of, of workshops with Ryan Paul from the USA. That was uh, the Internet Policy uh, Interest Society director, and we have had Emilia Zalewska from Poland and Shuta Chef Poland and NASC uh, to talk about uh, cybersecurity analysis. And also, I remember this session we touched on, on digital violence and child online safety. This another topic that is related with encryption, right? Uh, how to, to make sure that uh, this. Uh, uh, I remember also Emilia touching on the age verification issue and several things regarding how to protect the child online. Uh, it was very interesting to talk about that. Then in September we have our huddle at the African IGF, uh, where people to get, uh, get together there in, in Abuja, right? Abuja was? Or in Abuja, Abuja, sorry. In Abuja it was, uh, and they, they have had the, the huddle there, again in, in, in the ISOC booth uh, at the African NGF, so another moment to, to share uh, insights and, and get networking. Then in September as well, we have a, a workshop or, uh, about the gender bias in artificial intelligence with some experts as well. Then in October, reaching to, to the, the IGF, we have a, a webinar there, about a workshop there about prepar preparation for the global IGF. Uh, where, yes, so the alumni network were there and different colleagues from the Utah IGF coordinators like Fio, uh, me and she's, she's Nathan, sorry, uh, Lucy Moura as well, that was a, a, another ISO alumni. So with this, you can see, let me stop sharing. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we come to the end of the session, but it's not just the end, I am really surprised by how much we have done this year, right? Uh, I, I think that every of us is, is very surprised. And looking back today, it's clear that we have been very busy and achieved a lot. But remember, this is just our starting point. We are all about working together, le learning from each other, and helping in the area of internet governance. I can see from today's energy and discussion that we all share this vision and, and are ready to do, do even more in the future. So a big thank to everyone here, every story, idea that made today special, and the good vibes of the, of the volunteer in teamwork. Uh, you know, contacting the senior speakers for the workshops, creating the flyers, organizing our huddles and coffee chats. It's all a volunteering efforts, and this promises a bright future for the ISOC alumni network. And as we think about the next steps, I am very hopeful and happy, and 
there's so much we can do, uh, so many challenges to tackle, and so many ways we can make a difference in the world of the internet governance. But before we end, let's take a moment for any questions or comments. Uh, we want to hear from you and keep the conversation going. Uh, Mauricia, do you know if we have any questions from our online audience? Thank you, Nicholas. I have checked the chat. Uh, no questions as of yet, um, but I will just post another uh, comment in the, the chat to ask for more questions. Yes, um, we have a, a question on site here. Maybe we will address the on site here. And if you want to do some closing remarks as well, I, I can let you go after the person. So yes, passing the microphone here on site. Thank you. Hello everyone. First of all, congratulations on all the work you have done this year. And uh, all the work as an Isaac alumni is, is very great to see that the network keeps strong and with people from all around the world. Uh, my name is Emanuela. I'm from Brazil. Today I work at an NGO called Instituto Alana, but I was an Isaac uh, fellow in 2018. Yeah. <laughs> and so my question for you guys is I saw a lot of workshops and formation activities that are done within the network. But today I work with advocacy, for instance, and I see a lot of youth uh, initiatives that are, they produce manifestos and they produce frameworks for design and they raise the voice of youth in claims for government action, for internet action. And this is a question like, for an uh, advocacy perspective, is that what are you guys doing and is there ways to do this? And uh, because, uh, for instance, Internet Governance Forum is very important, but it is not a decision-making place. So are you guys like going to the the Global Digital Co Compact? Is this something that the ISOC alumni, they are engaged with and other decision-making spaces and as well as helping each other with advocacy on their own countries? Because I would be very interested in participating in that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manu. And you are spot on. Yes, that exists. And I would, um, I would, I'll start from what we have as we're trying to put together a set of checklists or uh, a how-to guideline for advocacy for young people following our coffee, cha our coffee chats. So in the past, we've asked people, what do you need? And what advocacy are you working on? And then in the coffee chat, we try to give them support and say, here are resources to enable you to make this go further. Or here are people that are also working in these areas, and you can partner with them. Because we know that the coffee chat lasts only for an hour, there's an alumni mailing list. It's called, um, I think there's a name for it, actually. There's a whole mailing list where people can post what they're up to in their countries and say, we need support for this. There are people from ISOC who respond. There are young people who say, I can collaborate to work on it with you. So the idea is we want to actually walk the talk. And in the, in the coffee chats, we try to make that um, support available through resource um, sharing, through sharing of best practices, and then the training to be able to engage in advocacy. The other part about how we rally support to advocate as a, a youth team, I think right now it started off from the country level and community level where people are doing their individual work customized for their region. Right. Um, maybe looking forward, we can see how we can merge efforts to do something like what we did um, around, say, go 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 to an event and talk on a, a particular thing as alumni network. Uh, um, we can do that together. But for other angles where I talk works with youth, youth, the standing group has written position papers for um, global um, data compact for. Uh, different angles of whistles and all of that. So that angle for um, ISOC and youth, it is this. But for the alumni network, we can do the projection for working together as an alum alumni network on a global level pretty soon. For what is happening with advocacy is pretty much for everybody in their own countries. And that's what the Coffee Chat seeks to do. I'm just really excited that you are in this session because I know how you've been asking, where do we start, how do we uh, running support and so I'm happy you are here and that you are engaging and giving um, the right nudges for us to look in the right direction so that's what is happening and we need all the expertise for you to help us to enrich the conversations and to make sure that we are implementing some of the things that we've spoken about in our sessions thank you thank you Lily do we have any other questions please Ashirwa oh, okay. thank you Nico uh, so this is Ashwat for the record. I'm an ISOC alumni in terms of I completed an online uh, Defend Internet course. 
I'm also in uh, Internet Society Special Interest Group on Internet for Education. Uh, thank you so much for your hard work that you've been doing, and I could see you've made a lot of impact as well, so congratulations on that. Uh, it still is still to be done. But my more question is more related to kind of management and logistic issue. So uh, youth standing group is a global, we have members from all around the world, right? Uh, from Asia, Africa, and all. Uh, similar with our special interest group. So the problem we face while during the meetings is managing the time. It's morning in somewhere, it's day in sometimes, and if uh, Europe and uh, Europe and uh, Asia can come, then Amer it's too much, too late in uh, America. And also, how do you manage that? Yes, I can answer those. Uh, <laughs> yes, we, we have agreed that there is a universal hour that is 13 UTC. But yes, it's not beneficial sometimes from uh, for the ones that are most in the east of Asia Pacific. So yes, we need to deal with that. But it's a good point, and we could consider like having parallel meetings. We, in the past, we have had some uh, activities that we have duplicated activities, right? Like at one hour and maybe two hour, uh, twelve hours later, uh, a similar activity. But yes, sometimes it's difficult to have the speakers, uh, the senior speakers that has a uh, full uh, day time occupied uh, to, to have in, in both sessions. But yes, it's a, it's a good idea, a good point, and it's a, it's a good uh, point for, for the future uh, uh, workshops and activities we could have. So now we have a, a very, we are coming to the end. It's crucial to understand also that the Internet Alumni Network, while it's a significant platform, doesn't have like a singular voice, like a traditional organization. Uh, as Lily said, it's made up of individuals, and these individuals working through uh, their respective organizations are who amplify the, its voice and drive its mission. Um, so thank you all for being a key part of today's success, and I, uh, I will ask for a big round of applause uh, for everyone. <laughs> And also, le let's capture this moment with a picture. Those here, please gather around. And, and for our online participants, Mauricia, could we get a snapshot uh, as well? Would be great.